Welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting, featuring the best advice on how to maximize profits from your Airbnb listing, as well as real life experiences from Airbnb hosts all over the world. Welcome. We are your hosts, Josefa Kapadia and Jasper Rivers. Get paid for your pad. 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 Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Get Paid for Your Pad. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about tax related issues, like how do you report your taxes to the IRS, how do you, uh, what kind of forms do you need. So I decided to invite a tax expert uh, on the podcast and his name is Derek Davis. So Derek, welcome to the show. Hi Casper, thank you for having me. So can you give us a little uh, background of, of yourself? Yeah, so I started working in tax um, at a company called Deloitte & Touche back in January of 2010, Um, and I quit around September of 2014, so last year, um, to join the sharing economy because I I found that, one, it was, you know, really interesting, um, and two, it, it seemed like because... Um, there's a conflict of interest from the um, from the company Airbnb and in the host perspective um, to giving professional tax advice. Um, it just seemed like there was a perfect kind of niche that was that was growing, um, and so I quit my job and and started a website called uh, Shared Economy CPA, as well as another um, company called Tabby. Um, so so yeah, so I've been doing that now for about six months. So Airbnb doesn't provide hosts with a lot of information on how to do their taxes? Correct. So what happens is um, because it's a, it's um, because there's a huge issue around um, employment status, um, Airbnb is specifically hands off um, because they are worried that if they give too much advice or, or guidance, they, they may be, considered an employer and the host may be considered an employee Um, and if that ever kind of comes about um, Airbnb would be subject to a lot of back taxes and penalties and interest as well as um, paying uh, various unemployment benefits as well as um, social security taxes and and other other sort of FICA taxes so um, for those reasons alone Airbnb is really hands-off okay right well, that's uh, that's that's good for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and just to be clear, we're we're talking about uh, U.S. taxes today. Um, I mean, every taxes are different in every country, of course. And this episode is is uh, is just for the hosts who are in the United States. So uh, my my first question, Derek, Airbnb host, do they need to pay taxes? Yes. So even if you do not receive a 1099 from Airbnb and or you received um, earnings from a guest outside of Airbnb, you want to really make sure to report all of your earnings. The reason being is that if you underreport your earnings, um, there are some civil penalties um, and and laws that 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 you don't want to cross. So it's it's really important to, to report all earning that you received, not only on your potential 1099, but any sort of income that you received um, outside of Airbnb in relation to your renting activities. So so what is a 1099? So 1099 is a is a tax form between two third parties and it pretty much um, just states who's paying you who's or who's paying who's receiving and the gross amount that's being reported so um, for airbnb host specifically what's shown in your dashboard is the net amount so when i say net it means that airbnb is taking out their three percent commission fee however in the 1099 that's issued to you that's the gross amount so it's important to deduct um, Airbnb's commission amount. And if you compare the amount that's shown in your dashboard and the amount that's shown on your 1099, the 1099 is going to be slightly higher. 
Okay, right. And Airbnb reports that number to the IRS? Correct. So, so Airbnb is going to send, for, and the, as you've said, for U.S. tax purposes only, Airbnb is going to send a tax form to the host as well as the IRS. And the IRS is going to quickly double check the two numbers to make sure that they line up identically. Right. So, so if it doesn't, it's not like you, you will only be flagged if, if they uh, specifically decide to look into your situation. They, they have an automated system where they can like, easily just check those numbers. Correct. It's going to be a, a quick, a quick cross check. So it's the, the, their, this, their internal systems will, will, will tie it out very quickly. Okay. Got it. So what, um, what, what kind of form do you need to, to report this income? Yeah. So the two main forms to kind of be aware of for schedule C is the, um, for, for Airbnb host, the two forms are either schedule C or schedule E. Um, so the schedule E is rental passive income. So say, for example, you have a management company that's managing the property and you just kind of sit back and you take a, uh, receive a paycheck that, that may, um, allow you to, to claim your income and expenses on schedule E. However, if you do a lot of services for your, for your, for your guests and kind of what the IRS looks for is, you know, providing substantial services such as cleaning the rooms, providing breakfast and, and other things of that nature that's more in line with a, with a, a, a typical bed and breakfast, then um, you may want to report your income expenses on, on the Schedule C. Um, the, the two main differences between the Schedule C and Schedule E is that Schedule C, you'll be required to pay self-employment tax, whereas the Schedule E, you're not required to pay self-employment tax. So it's more beneficial to be in, in Schedule E? Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's important to have, you know, documentation surrounding, um, you know, what position that you took. You know, for example, we have a, um, an Airbnb host located in San Francisco as a, as a client of ours, and he's currently getting audited by the IRS, and they're claiming that his income and expenses should come on a Schedule C, not Schedule E. Um, so it's important that regardless of the position that you take, you just have, you know, documentation showing why you took, um, the position that you took. Right. And this could be, for example, if you're, if you're hiring somebody to do the Airbnb management for you, you should show like some sort of contract between the two of you. Correct. So that can either come in the form of contracts or you can show payment to a third party, um, you know, if, if you are an Airbnb host and you have another management company looking over all of your stuff or, and you know, they, they let the guests in, they clean the apartment and all you would do is just kind of sit back and receive passive income. Then you just want to clearly show, um, that you're paying a third party company uh, right. to perform all the services. Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say I was a U.S. citizen. So my situation is I have a person who cleans and, and does the check-ins, but I do all the communication with my guests myself. So I send them messages, I send them emails, um, you know, I'm, I might make a couple phone calls. So would that be considered Schedule E or C? Yeah, um, that's a good question. It, it's still a little bit gray. Um, so the what the IRS will also use to determine um, your participation level is they have a seven-point test that kind of lays out, okay, you know, did you spend more than 500 hours helping your clients? Or, or for, for this example, it would be your guest, you know, um, are there other members involved? You know, what are their commitment levels? And I, I think kind of just time back, it's, it's just really important to show, um, you know, clearly how you arrived at your conclusion on, on, on your tax forms. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, you know, it's, Every, every tax situation is kind of specific and it's one off, but you know, whichever position that you do take, just, just have proper documentation on how you arrived there. Right. And is there somewhere where people can, can uh, find those that seven point checklist? Yeah, it's actually on my website. So shared economy CPA.com. Uh, if you go to the blog, there's, um, there's, there's a, there's a kind of overview on it and there's also a link back to um, the IRS's website. 
which provides more more detail on it. Right. So so everyone can just uh, if you're not sure, you can uh, use this checklist to to figure out whether you think it's schedule C or E. And sometimes it might be you know not completely clear, but you're mm -hmm. saying that whatever you do, it's important to to at least uh, make sure you have documentation and make sure you um, you point out sort of the reasoning why you chose you know either schedule correct correct okay um and then in in general it's more uh it's more it's better to be on on, on schedule e right so you don't have to pay those those employment self-employment taxes yeah so from from the host perspective you you'll be subject to less tax if if you're on schedule e um and if you're on and if you're on more of the conservative side, um, it would be better to put your your um, income and expenses on Schedule C. Right. And what what type of taxes do you do you need to pay? You have self-employment tax. Um, is is there any other taxes? Yeah. So there's so self-employment tax is is on top of your personal income tax, which you'll you'll have to pay taxes on. Um, and and kind of the biggest gray area right now is occupancy taxes and and other and other lodging taxes. Um, you know, it's still unfortunately not too clear based on the local municipalities and Airbnb how they're going to handle that. But I, I think it's going to resemble what's going on in New York where Airbnb is collecting the taxes on behalf of their hosts and remitting it to local cities. Okay, so I think in San Francisco, did, aren't they doing a similar thing? Or uh, Yeah, yes, yeah, so that's what they're doing right now. And, and so since Airbnb collects the taxes and uh, submits them to the, uh, to the IRS, do you need to fill these out in your forms or no? Um, yeah, so, so currently if it, I mean, it really depends if, if the IRS is doing it or excuse me, if, Air, if Airbnb is doing it on, on, beha on your behalf, they should theoretically cover all the forms, but if they aren't, then, then you'd have to check in with your local city and, and, and check, um, the filing requirements. E each state is kind of different mm -hmm. and each city has their own special rules. Right. And as far as the, the, the taxes, like the self-employment and the personal income taxes, no matter what state you are in? Yeah, so each, so th that's a good question. Each state is, is very different. Um, so it's, you know, unfortunately there's, there's no kind of clear blanket answer. It just, it, it depends, it's a, it's a case by case scenario. Okay, right. And what about if you, let's say you own an apartment in New York, but you live in Los Angeles, like does, does that? affect your situation? Yeah, so that also affects your filing requirements. So if you are a California resident, but you, you own a property, say in New York or Florida, you'll be expected to file a tax return there. So do you need to file in both um, states then or? Yeah, yeah, you'll have to file um, both in the state that you are currently living in, as well as the state where your uh, Airbnb residence lies. But, but I'm assuming you don't have to pay taxes in both states then uh yeah you'll have to pay you'll have to pay state income tax in, in both jurisdictions okay um, well yeah one because i mean you know you have to pay state taxes in the state that you're working in but also um because you have you know a revenue generating property in another state you're going to be expected to owe taxes on that right but you don't you don't need to pay taxes in california on the property that you have in new york Correct. That, so that would fall under your, um, that would just fall under your federal income tax. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, now I, a lot of questions I get are about deducting expenses and that's, that's probably the, uh, sort of the, the topic there where there's a lot of, uh, you know, uncertainty, a lot of questions, um, because it's not always exactly clear what you can deduct and, you know what percentage you can deduct if if it's an expense that you use that's for personal use but also for Airbnb use. So um, what what are the the most common items that you can deduct in, on your taxes? Yeah, so the most common kind of overlooked deductions. I mean, one it's definitely your um, your commission fee because it's being reported in gross. Mm -hmm. um, depending on whether you put your income and expenses on Schedule C or E, you could potentially deduct your rent 
um, and that's that's generally a really large expense. Um, another kind of more common ones are you know your utilities, your cable bill, um, and then less common ones, but they're definitely great ones are you know your cell phone bill, and that would be on a proportionate usage. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you're on your phone half the time trying to talk to to guests and, and get them onboarded, you want to deduct fifty percent of your bill. Um, and then you know you have this, the more standard things such as your linens, you know your bedding supplies, and you know your cleaning supplies, and, and any of those associated expense, expenses. So if you, when it comes to cell phones, is it does it make sense to to buy a cell phone that you only use for Airbnb to sort of keep it separated? Um, you know, I I actually have not heard of anyone doing that before. Um. You know, you, you, you technically could, but I, I, I think it might be, I mean, just, you know, logistically speaking, carrying around two cell phones is kind of, I, I, I've done that before for when I was working in, in, in public accounting. It's just kind of burdensome. Mm -hmm. Usually it's just easier to, to kind of just deduct the, uh, the proportionate usage. Okay. And does it matter uh, if you're on Schedule C or E when it comes to deducting? Um, there are special rules and limitations that do apply. Um, they're called passive activity losses, which is on your Schedule E. And then on Schedule C, um, what generally happens is that if you have three years of operating losses, so, you know, you claim a loss year after year, um, what the IRS will then say is your Schedule C activity is more of a hobby than it is an actual revenue generating activity. Um, and so... So, so yeah, so I kind of each form has their own kind of special rules and limitations. Because I imagine that if you're on Schedule E, and, which basically means that you're, you don't really have a significant uh, hand in, in, in managing the, uh, your Airbnb, that you, you can't really deduct like, you know, maybe cell phone calls or, or maybe, uh, you know, gas um, for, your, for your car. Or stuff like that, because because that kind of shows that you're actively involved. Yeah, yeah, and that's a really good point. So you know, the more the, the, you know, if you're trying to say that you, you know, you don't really actively participate in your Airbnb um, activities, but you know, you're you're trying to claim all these car deductions, and you know, you're claiming all these deductions, saying that you're doing all this extra work, then that kind of contradicts your your tax form, which is a really good point to mention. Right. So a lot of questions I get are about what happens if, for example, let's say you rent out one room in your house and you live there yourself and now you want to deduct some of the electricity or some of the other bills. Um, do, you, do you sort of calculate um, this proportionally based on the area of the house that you rent out? Like let's say it's 500 square feet of a total of 1500 or do you say um well it's like I, i've rented out my house you know like 50 days out of the year or 70 days out of the year like like how do you calculate these the proportional parts yeah I, I i think you know kind of in the in the same manner as how you'd want to report your um you know the, your tax forms and which ones you'd want to use. I, I think whichever kind of convention that you use and square footage is pretty much the most common. Just be, um, just have, you know, clear documentation on, on, on why you decided to take the position that you took. Um, and just be, um, you know, just be really clear um, on, on which method you use. And, and yeah, I, I would have to, I would have to say that square footage is, is probably one of the most common ones. Right, and then let's say you you rent out your complete house, but only for three months a year, then it would be easy, right? Then you just do like a quarter of, of all the bills. Yeah, yeah. So depending on your situation, that's, you know, I, I think something something along those lines would, would probably make sense. And then, you know, what are some other things that you could deduct? Can you, for example, let's say you own the house, can you deduct... Like mortgage expenses, or, or if you have if you use your car, to to you know maybe pick up your gas or to get supplies for your gas, can you can you deduct uh, depreciation? Yeah, yeah. So, 
So um, that, that's a really good. You can definitely take you know home mortgage you know deductions. The the, the interest you can you can deduct on um, on your Schedule A home mortgage interest. And then in terms of the car, um, you know, there, there's two different methods that you want to take, either a standard mileage uh, rate, which is, I believe, for 2014, it's around 56 cents, or the actual costs. So the actual costs are, you know, the gas, the oil changes, the maintenance, um, and things of that nature. Um, I think it's important to note that, you know, you can only take one or the other. You, you can't take both. The The standard mileage rate is supposed to be an all-encompassing tax deduction, whereas the actual cost, you just need to kind of keep more um, more records of. And, and, and most people generally don't do the actual cost just because it, it requires more time. Okay, yeah. I can imagine it, it can get pretty complicated at some point if you're, you know, you're trying to deduct part of your cell phone, part of your your gas, um, part of your uh, your rent, your utilities, it, it might get a little complicated at some point. Is there any tools that, that people can use to make things a little bit easier? Yeah, yeah, so th that's a good point. We actually launched an iOS app earlier this year. Uh, it's called Tabby. Uh, the website's trytabby, T-A-B-B-Y dot com. Um, and what it does is it connects all, all your credit and debit cards and allows you to easily swipe if your expenses are business or personal. So you don't have to keep any of these long Excel logs and, and it makes sure that it's capturing all your expenses. So, you know, no tax deductions are going to kind of fall through. Okay. Um, and it's, it, yeah, it's a free, it's a free mobile app and it's in compliance with IRS uh, publications. Okay, great. That sounds good. So it's, it's trytebby.com, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I'll make sure to link that up in the show notes um is there are there any any other type of expenses that people might not think about um you know just kind of overall it's when you you're so if you were so if you're an airbnb host you're considered a, a self-employed business owner so um it's not really what can you deduct it's how do you substantiate your deductions so you just need a really kind of clearly show how the expenses that you're incurring relate to your um, Airbnb business. So say for example, you know, you go out to dinner with your friend and, and your, the intentions of the dinner is um, to let him know how to become an Airbnb host and kind of get him onboarded and, and just really teach him all your experiences. That meal can be considered deductible of 50%. So, um, you know, it's just really important to, you know, just keep track of all your expenses because they can help you save thousands of dollars mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day. Um, right. So keep track of suspenses uh, and, and always, you know, try to think, okay, is this, is this expense related to my Airbnb business or not? And I, I guess mm -hmm. it's also good to sort of put yourself in the position of the, of the IRS, right? Just mm -hmm. imagine, imagine that you're auditing yourself and you're taking an objective sort of look at your, at your expenses and you think like, okay, does this make sense? This is reasonable. If I were an IRS inspector, would I... Um, you know, would, would I agree with this or not? Is that a mm -hmm, good way mm -hmm. to sort of look at it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And just, you know, just have really clear documentation and, you know, just clearly show that, okay, if I'm going to write this meal off, you know, why did I incur the meal? And, you know, what did we talk about? That's kind of Airbnb and business related. Okay. Sounds good. Are there any other, uh, any other topics that, or advice that you have for, uh, for Airbnb hosts? Um, you know, I think that's it for now. Um, you know, if, if, if there aren't any things that, you know, are, are kind of missed or overlooked, you know, there's a lot of free resources on my, my website. Um, yeah, I, I think just kind of the overarching theme is just really to keep track of all of your, um, all of your expenses. And that's, that's really the best way to save the most, the most amount of money. Um, and, and maximize your, your Airbnb revenue. Awesome. So just to summarize, uh, I guess, the, the figuring out whether you're Schedule C or E, um, then keeping track of all your expenses, those are, those are probably the, the two things that, uh, that people really need to pay attention to. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So if, uh, if people do have any other questions, uh, how, can they, how can they get a hold of you? 
Um, yeah, uh, my email address is Derek at Tritabby, T-R-Y-T-A-B-B-Y dot com. Um, and my Twitter is H as in Harry, D-E-R-E-K-D-A-V-I-S. Um, so. And then you also have your, your blog? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, and then the website, sharedeconomycpa.com. Okay, good. So for those who uh, who do have more questions, uh, you can hit me up, hit Derek up, or check out his blog, check out his uh, his mobile app. And uh, with that, uh, we come to the end of this episode. So Derek, thank you so much for for joining us today. I think this yeah. has been really helpful. Uh, so a lot of people are uh, appear to be unsure of how to deal with their taxes. Um, yeah. I'll I'll link up all the uh, all the stuff that we discussed on uh, on the show notes. And so uh, for everyone listening, uh, thanks for listening, and we'll, we'll see you next week. And if you, uh, you want to check out some resources about Airbnb, go to getpaidforyourpet.com. You can find all the show notes of the episodes as well as uh, some other really cool information as well. So thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Get paid for your pet. Get paid for your pet.